I'm going to say that probably the most important thing that you can do when you're purchasing a used vehicle is take it for a good test drive. Nothing is going to tell you more about that vehicle and what it's like to live with that vehicle than actually driving it down the road. And while you're doing that, use everything at your disposal. Use your eyes, use your ears, use your butt the way the thing feels, uh, even your nose. If you smell any funny smells, hear any strange noises. In fact, you should really probably do this before you do that vehicle inspection that I showed earlier in the video. This would be a great first step because this will clue you into potential problems. Like say for instance, you're driving it and you hear a particular noise in the left front. Well, you know, you're gonna narrow your search to that area and see what you can figure out. If the owner is not gonna let you test drive the vehicle, I would really, really try to avoid that vehicle because that sends up red flags to me. <laughs> You're buying it so that you can drive it. And if they're not going to let you drive it, well, I can understand if they're reluctant for you to take it somewhere to have it inspected, that kind of thing. Uh, that happens. But for them not to let you test drive the vehicle, I might go look for another vehicle if that's the case. Instead of me talking, let's, uh, let's get to driving, shall we? Step one, start it up, let it idle. Does it make any rattles? Does it make any strange noises while it sits there? Does it start up well? Does it crank really slow? I mean, these are things that can that are all important clues to that can tell you about the condition of the vehicle. So just let it idle for a second. Look on the dashboard. See if there are any lights that are on that stay on. Uh, when you first turn the key on, there's a bulb check. Make sure all those bulbs come on, particularly the check engine light. If the check engine light doesn't come on when you do that bulb check, that could mean that there's codes stored in the computer or some issue there that you won't know about until you plug a scanner in. So, you know, all these things, like I said, look at everything, absolutely everything that you possibly can. One of the first things I'll do is I want to see, check the engine performance and the shifting of the transmission. So I'll find a road that's like out of the way and make sure there's nobody around. And I'll just get out on the road and I'll just floor it. Feeling the shifts, listening to the engine, see if it goes with nice smooth power, no misses, nothing like that. And that's the speed limit there. And it actually did that pretty well. So I'm, I'm kind of pleased with that performance. I'm also keeping an eye on the temperature gauge as I drive uh, and the rest of the gauges. Are any lights or anything coming on? Uh, I'm noticing this rear defoster light comes on, so there might be some kind of issue there. The next thing I want to try is the cruise control. So I'll activate that, find out how to set it, see if that engages, and it does. Also a good sign. Does it disengage when you hit the brakes or clutch, and in this case it did. So we know the cruise control works, that's also good. The idea is to make sure that everything in the vehicle is operating as it should. When you find a nice straight stretch of road, um, try to, in, there's nobody around obviously, just let your hands off the steering wheel a little bit and see if it tracks straight. If it pulls to one side or something that could indicate an issue with like a, a, the tire or an alignment, something like that. Uh, that needs to be addressed. Also make sure the steering wheel is straight across. If the steering wheel's off a little bit, that's also an alignment issue. Um, feel for any vibrations, like when you get it up to highway speed, is it shaking? Or at low speeds, is it shaking? Low speed vibrations in the steering wheel often indicate tire issues. High speed vibrations often indicate tire balance or some kind of balance issue like that. So far, this one's doing pretty good. I mean, the cruise works. All that fun stuff. So all in all, I'm, I'm actually impressed with this car. It's uh, in better shape than I thought it was. I was expecting to see an overheat. I'm not. In fact, the temperature is perfect for what it should be. Now also, when you apply the brakes, if there's any vibrations, that could indicate that there's warped rotors or drums. Listen for wind noises. This has got a little bit of a wind noise over by this mirror. That could be something that, if that annoys you, you might want to address that. And weather stripping is something that you often need to get from the dealer and is often expensive, particularly on older vehicles, if you can get it. And then here's another one. I'm going to try to apply the brakes firmly 
with nobody around just to see how they react. And that actually reacted pretty good. Another thing I'll do is I'll try to find a nice open parking lot that I can go into so that I can turn the steering wheel lock to lock and I can get a good listen for the vehicle at lower speeds. So I'll turn the wheel all the way in one direction and listen. Listening for any clicking, any rubbing, any abnormal noises. I don't hear anything there. I'm gonna do it in the other direction. Same thing, no noises, no nothing, but that's what you're listening for. And the ability to actually steer the wheel all the way in one direction. If you can't, that could indicate an issue. And the idea is to find every problem with the car so that when you get negotiate your price or negotiate for the vehicle, you know what you're getting into. And if you have a doubt and you, you don't think that you're capable of, of making that assessment, take it to a professional. Uh, and, and pay them to do an inspection. They're usually not that much. Uh, less than $100, I would think, to do a good thorough vehicle inspection. And even better if you can find somebody that specializes in the brand of vehicle that you're looking to purchase. They'll be aware of things like any service bulletins or any anything about that vehicle that, that might crop up. They, they might have a particular pattern failure. They might know where to look or, or some update that the factory needed to do in order to make the vehicle safe, what have you, different recalls. So the, these people would be privy to that information. Um, but, you know, a general repair shop that, that works on things all the time, I mean, see if you can take the vehicle there and, and have them look at it. It's better to be safe than sorry. I, I can't tell you how many times people have brought me vehicles that they've already purchased that have major, major problems. And now they have to deal with that on top of possibly making payments on a new used car. So definitely do your homework. Definitely do an assessment. And figure the thing out before you actually commit to buy. Okay, in summary, there are certain things you should avoid. I'm not saying don't buy the car. I'm just saying that there are certain things you should avoid, which I covered much of in the previous video. And one of the things that I forgot to mention was modified cars. Let's say you come across a car that's like got a body kit on it or has been lowered or the engine's been modified. I'm just gonna come out and say that in my experience, that's not often done well. Unless you're into that sort of thing and you're buying it as a race car, race truck, whatever, uh, and, you, and you have a knowledge, a good working knowledge of these things, that would be the only instance where I think that that would be a quote unquote wise purchase. Other than that, really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to outline, outline in this video those things that could cost you money. Those things that you make your purchase of the car and you think that that's all you're going to need to spend. It's not very likely that you're going to purchase the vehicle used and there's going to be zero problems with it. Unless you get something called a certified used car and many manufacturers offer these. And in my opinion, if you're going to buy a car, this is probably the best way to go because if you buy a new car, the second you drive that thing off the lot, you've lost money. And the reason for that is, is because of the depreciation. Uh, you can turn around and try to sell that car the very next day and only have like five to 10 miles on it and it's not gonna have the same value. Well, with a certified used car, what the dealership does or what the manufacturer does is they sign off on that vehicle stating that everything in that vehicle is working as it should and we're going to offer you X warranty for X amount of time. That's a pretty good deal and, and in many cases you actually get a better deal than like I say buying a new car because you'll lose out many times when you buy a brand new car. Other than the cool factor of owning a brand new car, being the first person to drive it, own it, that, that's it's got its own appeal sure but in the end financially it's not necessarily the best option. But as far as used cars are concerned I think personally a certified used car is probably the best way to go. Getting back to the highlights, um, yes, modified cars, those are things, you know, like I said, things that are lowered, things that have crazy paint jobs on them. Uh, these things, in my opinion, really devalue a vehicle uh, because they're, they ca they're catered to the taste of the person that owned it originally, uh, not necessarily to your taste. Let's get back to the collision argument. Um, as far as collisions go, 
I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy a car that has been in a collision. What I'm saying is, is this could lead to more expense as a result of that purchase. Uh, for instance, uh, let me just put it this way. It's not, in my experience, quote unquote, the body shop's fault. Um, I'm just gonna briefly touch on this. This is what happens. The vehicle gets in an accident, gets brought to the body shop. The body, you call your insurance company, they send an adjuster out, they look at the vehicle, they walk around with the body shop person, and they say, it's gonna cost X, Y, and Z in order to get this back to where it was. Well, that inspection is just a superficial inspection. The stuff that's underneath, all that crushed metal, there's usually more things to find there. And that's where the problems come in. Uh, the body shop's mandate is only to do what they're paid for. So the insurance company cuts them a check and says, this is what we're gonna pay you to do this job. The body shop hopefully goes about and, and does it in a straight up on the level manner and does everything that they're supposed to do. I can tell you, at least in my experience, um, it's, it's very rare that the estimate covers everything. And as a result of this, if the vehicle has been in a collision, if it's been in a significant collision and it's need to have its frame straightened or something like that, it's not often I see that this gets done properly, well, and a lot of times it's because it wasn't necessarily brought about during the estimate process. And that's about as far I'm gonna go with that. Maybe that's an ETCG1 video, whatever, but as far as vehicles that have been in collisions, especially significant collisions, we talked about those dimples up by sunroofs, that kind of thing, if you see that, that might give you some caution about that vehicle. Remember, it's your money until you hand it over for whatever it is. So if you're gonna spend money on something, I want you to invest it wisely. I want you to invest it in something that, believe it or not, I think this car here is a really great investment, uh, mainly because its, it's issues are cosmetic for the most part. I mean, it has very few issues outside of that, as you can see through the inspection in this video. So I'm just trying to protect your investment, protect your money. Um, and give you some ideas of where to look. So, modified cars, cars that have been in collisions, things to avoid, um, flood cars. Personally, I would just flat out stay away from flood cars. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've rarely, if ever, seen that situation work out well. Anytime a, car is, <clears throat> anytime a vehicle is submerged underwater for a significant period of time, and I just want you to think of everything that's on the ground, everything that's everywhere, everything that's in the ground, such as sewage and all that kind of stuff, is what's in flood water. That was inside your car for a significant period of time. Not a good choice in my opinion. So I, I, would, I would stay away from those things. Um, and look for pride of ownership. Uh, if they have a service history, if they've got like a long list of things that they've, that they've done to, to maintain and upkeep. I mean, they, they really took pride in the vehicle. They, they really wanted to keep it up and, and make sure that it was reliable and did what it needed to do for them. That is an excellent sign. So, things you should take with a grain of salt. Anyway, um, I hope this information was helpful to you. I tried to cover as much as possible, but I know there's some things I missed, and I know there's some things that you're gonna share with me in the comments about your own experiences and your own input. Feel free to do so. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, or you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and now on Google+. And I always close with, be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. Before you spend your money, Take some time, check it out. And if you don't think you can do it yourself, take it to somebody who knows how. See you later.